Hello everyone, Hamil here. Just wanted to share some thoughts on R1 RCM, the report before market opens tomorrow. First, a quick disclaimer. Please do your own due diligence and research. This is not a buy, hold or sell recommendation. I'm just covering my own thoughts and what I'm going to do with my position. So if you look at the daily chart here, let me just, uh, I'm going to be back and forth today. I want to cover this in a little more detail than I normally would cover any stock because I know a lot of people have bought this based on my recommendations. I want to cover this in as much detail as I can from what I know so far. So as we look tomorrow, so option expiration, August 20th, which is a Friday. This is the implied move between now and August 20th. So this is the range. The stock is expected to stay in as per options market. Now that doesn't mean it will stay in this range, but most likelihood it should. So 2474 on the top side and 1774 on the on the bottom side here. I, I, I don't really see it undercutting this low unless something really unless something happens which is totally out of the blue. So that's what the expectation are. Now I've been holding this stock for a very long time and I can I will continue to hold this until further notice. So if you own it, um, I would hold it. Now, I would not recommend buying it at uh, currently here because I would like this to be set up further and I uh, want to see how uh, what earnings bring. Now, let us go to the weekly chart where we want to cover that. So as we can see, continue to have a better earning uh, earning year over year. So they're they are expected or estimated to improve earnings next year by 45%. That is much better than this year. So. It, it continues its growth. Uh, I know revenue has been trending. The growth year over year or quarter over quarter has been uh, on the lower end. So it looks like they have been plateauing to some extent. However, I, I do see or from what I've seen and heard from the company, it looks like uh, the, you know better days are ahead. So as we can look at the sponsorship, we can see they have a lot. They were they had 300 funds last year, and then they have 415 uh, institutional ownership. So, the institutional ownership is growing. Uh, as we can see, it had it is 32% off its all-time high, so which is a huge drawdown. I my average price is about 570, so I've been holding this uh, through several drawdowns before. I know it is really painful. However, it had a really great year in 2020, coming into 2021. So it takes time for a stock to digest those gains. So we can see this continue to go further sideways and then we can see, we'll see what happens in the future, but we can all, we always have to at least have some probabilities and thoughts about what we see the right side forming. So we can see it, we can see a cup forming here. So if we go here, I can go to weekly chart here and we can probably see this form a cup. That's one of the possibilities, obviously, and we don't know what, you know, there are several other possibilities. It can break down, go further down, even though I don't believe it will, but it can. There is no guarantees, obviously. So we can see right around, uh, this is, uh, let's see, so it's around January. So we can see, you know, right around that time frame when it can probably set up if everything goes right. That's, that's what I'm at least looking for. Now let's uh, go through some company information very quick. So last, if we go back to the weekly charts, we can see last quarter they had a negative earnings. And I want to I want to make sure everybody knows if you do not know uh, what was the reason behind that. So earlier this year, so the, the reason for that negative earnings was, let's see here, there we go. So they had to pay 105 million payment for the conversion of preferred shares to common, which is actually a good thing. They wanted to simplify the structure. And I have that, uh, this is the presentation from the company's uh, Q2 call. If you want to go through that, you can. That just explains uh, what they did. They wanted to just, just simplify the stock structure, their preferred stocks, and then uh, several other uh, several other things they had to endure and go go through earlier when they were there were a lot of troubles for this company. And then uh, they have obviously emerged uh, pretty strong from that, but they had to make some decisions and get some fundings. And uh, there were, so, so that still ha has an overhang on it. So now a couple other things, which I was actually not, I, I knew about it, but I didn't really honestly know how it can result in dilution of share, share count when I, this is way back in 2016. So this is when they were under financial troubles and there were a lot of issues, uh, even dating further back to 2012 and 2013. Not gonna go into those issues. 
However, so they had, uh, so this is what they did basically. They took care of the preferred 8% Series A convertible preferred stock. So this is what they converted into common stock so that they paid that money. And then obviously that resulted in dilution of the share counts uh, just, to, just to make the, the structure uh, more simpler for other investors, which is a good thing. And that's why we can see the stock rallied. Now, knowing this, uh, going into the earnings, it was a normal expectation that obviously they will incur the charge. But now this is what I knew, but I didn't really realize at that point that it can result in dilution. So they had warrants that uh, this Ascension and Tower Brook, they are the ones who, uh, who basically invested $200 million uh, in accredited health back then. Uh, Arvan Arsene was accredited health. So they had invested that money back then uh, and they had warrants and preferred stocks. So those warrants still were still outstanding. So recently, they basically, you know, they basically converted those warrants. And then, um, you know, so based on those, uh, they sold like 20 million shares and there are still 40 million, uh, which they can sell any time from what I believe. Uh, so this is what happened back here. Let's see if they look at the daily chart. So this is where it really happened. Uh, it was right around end of May where they announced that uh, they are going to, you know, execute those warrants and then end up selling those shares. So there was a, so we can see 20 million shares were sold right around at 2183. Also, the CEO sold about 500,000 shares. So there was a, obviously that's caused, that caused some dilution and we can see uh, it affected the stock price. Now there are still that 40 million shares out there so we, we can still expect, now I'm not sure uh, if they sold any of those shares between here and here. I haven't seen anything, any filings. So we can see at some point those shares will come into play if they haven't been sold yet. Another thing to remember is right when they extended the contract or they renewed the contract with their number two clients by the amount of money uh, that they manage is uh, is intermountain and if you look at the intermountain so they have a warrant it's not much it's about you know one and a half million share warrant so that's not a lot at six dollar price and by the way if i if i recall it correctly i couldn't find that information but these 60 million shares were at three dollars and fifty cents so regardless i you know i did not take that into account back then so a learning lesson for me Regardless, I would not have sold it anyway. There was no way I would have known and timed this. So it is just a matter of time. So let's go through the investor presentation as well. And I want to just go through some slides very quick to, uh, to showcase the growth potential for this company as we move forward. So let's go through some slides. So this just talks about the market share. So you can, you know, if you are interested, you can go through this presentation. So these are the major hospitals they serve. So they serve both hospitals, uh, mostly not for profit, but they are also serving for profit now and then physician groups. So they have had several acquisitions recently. So we are going to just see that slide very quick here, just to demonstrate how much more, how much more there is uh, cross sell potential for them. So let's go to that slide here very quick. So this shows the margin ramp up phase as we can see as it exits uh, 2021, it's still 16.5 billion in margin ramp up phase. So they still have, uh, they still have a lot of uh, potential for margin expansion. Also they are targeting 10 to 12% growth in end to end NPR over the next three to five years, which is pretty good. And then this is the install base for their acquisitions. So PASS install base, uh, there was one of the acquisition, SCI, Cerner, Realworks, and they're not even showing Intermedics, which was another ex uh, which was another acquisition. So this, all of all of these guys, they had their own clients, and then they still haven't really, I haven't really seen a lot of conversion from these clients, and they have done a good job converting some probably modular offerings, so but not the whole ref cycle offering. So there's a lot of potential as we move forward from here. And then there's also, as we can see, this is just the dates. This is the intermedics I was talking about right there. So as we, as we can see, there is a lot of potential for this company, both in revenue growth and in margin expansion, which could translate into earnings. And then they're also working on automation 
and uh, and artificial intelligence machine learning and they are converting all the mundane tasks all the manual sta tasks into automatic tasks uh, by leveraging uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, robotics so that obviously is going to also improve their margins so i look at this company more as a more as a, a technology company because that's what they really are so as we can see there is a lot of potential for this company so just circling back i just wanted to cover this in more detail because i know a lot of folks have bought this stock uh, based on what i have recommended so i want to make sure that i do cover this in a uh, little detail because i haven't covered this in this much detail for a very long time i have made videos before but it wasn't this comprehensive there was one which was the rest were very quick so again that's where we stand so this is the implied move i am holding it over earnings which are before market opens tomorrow normally management does a great job beating expectations quarter after quarter so we will see what tomorrow looks like management is also it's like the clockwork most of the earnings most of the earnings uh, they 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 have contracts that that come out last last uh, earnings they extended the relationship with ascension so we can expect to see uh, maybe a contract win tomorrow that will be they'll be really good so this stock basically needs to reset and reestablish itself to get rid of that overhang that resulted from the 20 million shares and then uh, we need to still figure out what they're going to do with that 40 million and when that is going to come into play so that is all i have i hope this helps take care